2022 is nearly over and this was an amazing year for our Art of Drumming YouTube channel. We managed to hit the 100,000 subscriber mark and even 150,000 by now. This all is just possible because of you, our community. So to end the year, we listened to all of your comments and decided to create a second part to our most successful video so far, our 5 legendary snare sounds. Enjoy! In the first video, we covered 5 drummers and their famous snare sounds, but there are so many more out there. And just a short look at the comments from the previous video told us, there has to be a second part. So here it is. And this time we partnered with our friends at Sonor, who provided some awesome snares for this one. Let's jump straight in. First up is one of the snare drum sounds that's been requested the most, Neil Peart's on the song Tom Sawyer by Rush. When we checked the internet for information about a snare drum, we soon came across a wooden 14x5.5 Slingerland artist snare that he started to use as his main snare in the late 70s. It's pretty likely that the snare on the 1981 released song Tom Sawyer is this exact drum. We picked the 14x5 and 3 quarters Sonor Vintage series snare for our recreation and installed a clear control sound drum head. To achieve a sound similar to Peart's, we need to hit the same pitch but short qualities. So the tuning is high, but we need some muffling to shorten the tone and the overtones. A paper handkerchief and some tape is the way to go. The snare is captured with an SM57 on top and an M201 as bottom mic and isolated it sounds like this. Here's our Tom Sawyer snare, once in the groove alone and then with a song. Here's the gear that stays the same for all sounds. The kit is an SQ-1 with a 24-inch kick drum and a 16-inch floor tom. But since we don't play the tom, it's also not mic'd. The kick mics are a TGD-70 in the porthole and a TGD-71 inside the drum. The overheads are two M90 Pro Xs, the hi-hat mic is an MC-930 and a dynamic M201 captures the room. The cymbals also stay on for all sounds and we have 14-inch A new beat hats, an 18-inch K dark crash thin and a 19 inch K sweet crash. Now after the first pretty high tuning, let's continue with a low one. Purple Rain might be the blueprint for an 80s rock ballad, and when you think of a great ballad snare, here it is. There, the sound itself is a mixture of a real snare drum augmented with the sound of a Lindrum drum machine. Bobby Z, the drummer of Prince's backing band The Revolution, at the time triggered the drum machine via a condenser mic on a snare. But our challenge here is to get as close as possible with only the acoustic snare. So what do we need? A crisp attack, a good body, and not too many overtones. So we picked a metal snare drum, a 14x6 Pro Light Brass to be precise, and went for a double ply pinstripe head. This special drum head design features two plies and an overtone reducing agent between those plies to get a more focused sound. Here's the tuning. After experimenting with multiple dampening tools like dampening rings and big fat snare drums, we ended up with a combination of the snare weight tool with a large 70s inlays and two mini muffs. That's very dry, but exactly what we're looking for. We also changed the mics to get a little more high end like the Lindrum delivers. The mics we picked are an M88 as bottom mic and an old trusty MD421 as top mic. Here's what it sounds like.
John Otto is Limp Bizkit's rhythm machine. While Purple Rain is well known for a very warm and low snare, John Otto likes it high and cutting. A great example for that is their song Break Stuff you just heard. The snare also is a lot more open than you might expect. If you listen closely, you'll really hear it ring. Since he played mainly shallow drums, we picked a 14x5 Prolite snare and went with a steel shell for a nice ring. The drum head on this one is a coded controlled sound one. Even though the black dot might make you think otherwise, it's a single ply head and has a pretty open characteristic. Remo themselves state that the outer area offers enhanced tone and sensitivity while the center dot adds durability and overtone control. All in all, it's just the right mixture of open qualities and focused sound for John Otto's snare. Now crank the snare up and get some mics in place. Here we went back to the SM57 and M201 combination from the first sound in this video. As you can imagine, no muffling is needed and this is a snare by itself. And here is the snare in a groove and with the music. This thing really has power and might actually break stuff. The next one is lower, but quite beautiful. Now one of the most loved and also most hated bands is probably Nickelback. But if you put that aside, their albums are usually very well produced and the drum sound of Daniel Adair is outstanding. So we picked one of their most famous tunes and checked to see if we could get close. Sharon James Dean is fine for me. So how you going? Trade this life for fortune and fame I'll even cut my hair and change my name Cause we all just wanna be big rock stars And live in hilltop bosses driving 15 cars The girls come easy and the drugs come Yeah, Chad Kruger really became a rock star But for us, the snare is much more interesting here It's a nice combination of a clear but warm attack A nice body and quite a lot of tone That sits very well in the mix of the song one of his go-to snares is a 14x6 DW Edge snare. Now what's so special about those? It's pretty simple. Those are wooden snares with a metal enforced bearing edge for some extra smack. We picked our trusty Sonar Artist series Cottonwood snare that has a similar warmth and attack even without the metal edges. Just as with John Otto's sound before, we picked a coded control sound head for this one. Once again, the mixture of durability, focus and still some openness work perfectly here. The tuning is a lot lower than the last one. But also the mic stayed the same and the SM57 with the M201 underneath worked great. Here's the snare sound. And here's the groove, once without and then with the song. What do you think about Daniel Adair's sound? Do you like it? Let's wrap it up with one of the legends and one of your most requested topics, Alex Van Halen. There's no better way to introduce Van Halen than through their music. 
In this case, it's their song Hot For Teacher from 1984, definitely a display of Alex Van Halen's outstanding drumming skills. Compared to the snare sounds we had before, this one is less open and rather dry. For this special sound, we decided to also pick a very special snare, the 14x6 Artist Bronze Snare. What an astonishing drum, and also super heavy. After some research, we came across a muffling technique he really liked. This photo shows his snare head with an A taped on it. Pascal also placed the tape A under the drum head in a similar way. This really reduces overtones a lot and creates the right muffled sound we're aiming for. The drum head we picked here is once again a clear controlled sound head like Alex Van Halen liked to use back in the day. This is the tuning. Now to play this song, you also need a few more cymbals, so Pascal brought in a 22-inch K-Ride and a 20-inch FX Oriental China Trash. The mics are the same as before, and we stuck with the SM57 and the M201. Here's the famous intro. Well that was quite a variety of snare sounds here, from very high and open to pretty low and muffled. Which one would be your go-to sound? And what other snare sounds should we include in the next one? Also make sure to check out shop.artofdrumming.com if you're looking for some drum sounds to use yourself. We're making sample packs from our recreating videos that are available for you to purchase. These snare sounds will also be available there very soon. Now post your thoughts in the comments and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. <laughs>